All right, I came across this video last night. I was watching this, and I could not believe what this guy said. Supposedly debunking Steven Anderson and all the new IFB cult stuff and whatever else. And he's talking about this dispensation of heresy movie. And he makes two statements that I want to address. First of all, watch this little part here. This film features ten different men who are labeled as heretics. Some of them are. They spend most... <laughs> This, this film, you know, lists 10 different men that are heretics. Some of them are. It doesn't say which ones are heretics, but I found that rather interesting. But uh, let's zip ahead here to 17 minutes and 30 seconds. This guy is a total stinking fraud. Just unbelievable the lie he tells here. Oh, 17, just right before it. Check this out. I'm has proven, and no amount of slander can take that from him. Talks about slandering C.I. Schofield and, and, uh, or Darby, I guess it was, or whatever else. Um, you can watch the whole video. I'll post a link to it. But uh, got to watch out for slandering. Watch what he says. They are crooked in their presentation. They try to change the definition of dispensationalism to something no sound IFB church believes. Dispensationalism has only ever had one gospel. Dispensationalism has only ever had one gospel. Um, that's non-dispensationalism. You know, um, saved by grace through faith throughout the whole Bible. That's non-dispensationalism. You're not a dispensationalist if you believe that way. Okay? A dispensationalist looks and they say, okay, the Garden of Eden, there, they're not being saved by grace through faith. All right, and then you go through the other, you know, the seven total dispensations, and you're looking, you're saying, okay, God's, there's grace there through the whole thing. That's correct. But grace is not the plan of salvation, right? There's different things that happen there. This guy just says, oh, it's, they're, they're changing the definition of dispensationalism because they say that there's, there's, you know, great dispensationalism has, has always just been one way of salvation. That's non-dispensationalism. Talk about Jesuitical sophistry here. I mean, my word. You know, comes out, says non-dispensationalism is the new dispensationalism, apparently. Then now he'll come right out and lie about Peter Ruckman. Watch this. But in Dispensation of Heresy, they use Peter Ruckman as the main spokesperson for dispensationalism. This is one of their favorite ploys. In Marching to Zion, they tried to tell us that John Hagee somehow represents churches which believe that God has future plans for Israel. That's preposterous on the face of it. Now they try to tell us that Peter Ruckman represents the standard view of dispensationalism. Again, that's preposterous. I believe that Ruckman held a heretical view of salvation because he believed that salvation was by works in the Old Testament. He just slandered Peter Ruckman. Peter Ruckman didn't teach that. He didn't say salvation is by works alone in the Old Testament. Works alone in the in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, certainly. You can't have faith because Jesus Christ is there physically on the earth. All right? <laughs> okay. Um, in the Old Testament, he taught faith and works. Just like in the time of Jacob's trouble, faith and works. James chapter 2, talking about that. So the guy lies about Peter Ruckman. I, I'm not sure who the guy is. Maybe one of you knows, you know, this Baptist preacher or whatever else that's debunking Stephen Anderson. Continue. Why don't they interview one of the tens of thousands of highly respected Baptists who have endorsed dispensationalism and who preach salvation by grace both in the Old Testament and in the New? Because Salvation by grace. Uh, well, uh, bright man there, it's always grace. God's grace is always there. But that's not the plan of salvation. All right? Continue. To do so would destroy their lie. They are deceitful in the proof that they offer. They so then they go through and, they, and they show, he shows, makes some good points there that, that a lot of these guys that they're showing as being attacking dispensationalism are actually Methodists and Presbyterians and whatever else that they would disagree with on other points. Fine and dandy. But, you know, saying what he said there, this guy, um, that dispensationalism has always had the same view. There's one gospel the whole way through. That's non-dispensationalism. Okay, and if you want a proof text real quick, let me just show you this really fast here. The proof text of salvation is by faith and works in the Old Testament. Let me show you this real quickly. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 through 21. You can read this. If you want a, a 
passage of scripture that proves that salvation is faith and works, that there's an element of works involved and somebody could lose their salvation in the Old Testament. Right here it is, Ezekiel 3:18 through 19. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Delivered your soul because you're warning somebody? Hmm. Verse 20. Here's where it gets really good. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. His righteousness which he hath done, that's works. Okay? Verse 21, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin... Uh, not and he doth not sin he shall surely live because he is warned also thou hast delivered thy soul so you have to warn both saved and lost and if you don't you're losing your soul right there faith and works in the old testament faith and works in the time of jacob's trouble how do you know revelation chapter 14 you see non-dispensationalists their their whole agenda the whole agenda of these satanists that are non-dispensationalist is they want you to believe that the gospel is always the same and you have eternal security as you go into the time of Jacob's trouble because then you see you can take the mark of the beast and you won't lose your salvation because after all you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption you see I'm eternally secure so I could take that mark because I have to provide for my own Bible tells me to see that's why they want to get rid of dispensational lines they're preparing you for something non-dispensationalists revelation chapter 14 verse 12 faith and works here's the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus and the faith of jesus keeping commandments and the faith of jesus faith and works you can't take the mark of the beast in that time period but you see now in la la weird land that we live in now dispensationalism is non-dispensationalism apparently according to this nut you know and you know if he considers me a heretic one of the you know the ten men here in the beginning there a lot of them are heretics and whatever else if he considers me a, a heretic i would be honored by that coming from this guy that's it's always been one gospel uh that the whole way through that's what dispensationalism is no that's non-dispensationalism un believable so now apparently according we're going to according to this guy we're just going to say that dispensationalism is actually non-dispensationalism and i guess now i'm non-dispensational because i hold to different plans of salvation down through the dispensations and also out into the future god's grace is always there i get it but the plan changes be really careful who you listen to